Hello everyone, this is Lugnuts and today we have the start of a very special series of videos about OpenTTD logic circuits. So if you've played with Minecraft Redstone before or Factorio circuits, this is basically the same thing but in OpenTTD. And these logical circuit devices open up a whole world of possibilities for advanced networks and it's really cool. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around at first, so let's get started by looking at an example of one of these circuits. Alright, so here I have a game that is running FERS Industry Replacement Set. So we have these custom industries, and here we have a port that is providing engineering supplies. And then over here we have two primary industries. And the way FERS works is if you deliver a certain amount of engineering supplies to the primary industries, they get a production boost. So we can see here I've been delivering 200 crates of supplies within three months, so I'm getting gung-ho production. And part of the reason for that is this logic circuit here. So the way this works is it waits for two trains that are full of engineering supplies to come. And once they both fill into these waiting bays, they'll both be released and allow, and then each path will split off. One will go to drop off iron ore, and one will go to drop off engineering supplies at the coal mine. So we can see here as this train approaches, both trains are released, and then the engineering supplies are brought to their respective destinations. So this is a way of perfectly balancing the trains to, to go to both of these primary industries. So you're probably looking at this and wondering how the heck does it work, and why are there two trains spinning forever in circles? And by the end of this video, we will be able to answer that. But before we can do that, we need to talk about binary logic in OpenTTD. So to make circuits, the first thing we're going to need is some wires and some ones and zeros. And in OpenTTD, the wires are going to be train tracks and the ones and zeros are going to be the color of the signal. So the convention is that a red signal represents a one or a true value and a green signal represents a zero or a false value. So the red signal and green signal here are really sending their true and false values down the track because if we extend the track, um, we can read out the value with a combo signal, chain that together, and it'll keep the same color as the uh, exit signal up here. And we can read it out from multiple places if we want to. So this is how the tracks transmit the values. It's also important to note that these values get transmitted over bridges and through tunnels and across different uh, types of tracks. So even though we have yellow per and we have some track, normal tracks here and maglev over here, you can still see that this signal, this combo signal here, still picks up that red, uh, that true value from all the way over here. So now that we have a way to transmit our true and false values, we need to be able to combine them in logic gates. And the first gate we'll look at is the AND gate. And it's actually probably a lot simpler than you expect. It's actually just a single combo signal, like so. So now these two lines are our inputs, and over here is our output. So in this case, true and false is false. But if we connect both of these lines together, now both of these signals are red, so they're both true. So true and true is true. So this is our AND gate. We can extend this AND gate to any number of inputs, so we could add another line here, and it'll still follow the AND gate behavior, where all the inputs have to be true for the output to be true. Alright, so the next gate we'll look at is the NOT gate. And this one's quite a bit more involved to build. It might look familiar. So we'll start with a 90 degree turn in the track and build a loop around it. And towards the input, put an entry signal on the loop and three more block signals to complete the loop. And then we'll put a exit signal in the middle and a combo signal for the output. Then we're gonna need two logic trains and we wanna double them up because we want each of these logic trains to be a full tile in length. And make sure there's two of them. Let those go out. So let me clear up this depot. All right, so now the circuit is done. This is a NOT gate, so when the input is true, the output is false. 
And similarly, when the input is false, the output is true. So this is quite a clever little gate. And it's not immediately clear how it works, but uh, next I will explain how exactly it works, because that will help with making building it more intuitive. Alright, so I've given the trains a speed limit. We're going a lot slower, we can see what's going on. So when the input is green, the trains sort of rotate on opposite sides of the loop to each other. And so the trains are always in one of these two blocks here. So this combo signal looks towards this exit signal. And this exit signal is looking at this block, the combo signal is looking at this block with this with the exit signal. So as long as there's a train there, the output is red. Now if we let the input be red, or true, the entry signal over here turns red, so both the trains get backed up on the opposite side of the loop. And that frees up both of these spots, so then the output is green. So the reason we want really fast trains on this loop is because as you can see, um, when the input goes to true, if we have slow trains, it can take quite a while for the output to turn green. But if I clear the speed limit, we can see that the change is basically instantaneous. It's a very efficient design. Actually, with just a AND gate and a NOT gate, we have everything we need to build every possible type of gate or circuit. So for example, here I've built an OR gate. And an OR gate is just an AND gate with a NOT on both of the inputs and a NOT on the output. So A or B is equivalent to NOT, NOT A, and NOT B. Uh, anyway, we'll see that it works. So right now both of the inputs are uh, false, so the output is false. But if either of the inputs is true, the output immediately turns to true. And of course, if both the inputs are true, it'll also be true. So at this point, we have everything we need to understand the first example with the FERS engineering supplies trains at the beginning of this video. So let's go look at that again. All right, we've returned. Let's take a closer look at this circuit. So we can see that we have two inputs that are reading the values of whether or not a train is there. So one input's here and one input's here, and they both get fed in this direction. And we also have our two outputs over here. So these entry signals control whether the trains can go through or not. And those are the outputs here. So over here, the two inputs come together. So this is an AND gate. And uh, normally you have a combo signal, but when you have an AND gate going directly into a NOT, you actually don't need the combo signal. So that brings us to the next gate, which is this NOT gate here. So if both of the inputs are true, the output will be false. Or to put it in terms of the colors, if both of the inputs are red, the output will be green. So that means if there are two trains there, we let both trains through. Just like that, magic. Well logic. So this was an introduction to logic gates in OpenTTD. Even though this is only the AND and NOT gate, like I said, they're really powerful and they're what you're going to use most of the time. So thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful and if you did, please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.